Good morning guys, my name's Sandy. This is Sawing with Sandy. I'm standing out here in my red pine forest right in the middle of central Ontario, Canada. What I'm going to do today aside from drinking my favorite sludge and cutting some lumber is I'm going to take a break and talk to you guys about something that you may have encountered already or you potentially will encounter. And what that is, is blades popping off the sawmill. Now what I'm referring to specifically, if we open up the housing here, is this blade here popping off the band wheels on the follower side as well as the drive side of the sawmill. When that blade pops off, you're going to know it because obviously the blade will stop. You won't be cutting anymore. And if you bought a sawmill recently, you probably bought it to cut lumber. So let's keep that blade on there. Today I'm going to talk about how you can do that. If this blade comes off, you're going to damage the blade, no question about it. At the very least, you're going to have to resharpen the blade. Potentially, you'll have to reset the teeth, then you'll have to sharpen it. Even worse, you might jump that blade off, you might cut this belt, and you'll probably scratch up the whole inside of the housing here. If you do even more damage, that blade's going to jump off, it's going to kink, and now that blade's garbage. Last time I bought some blades in order to get them shipped here, including taxes, I'm at the better part of $30 Canadian per blade. You don't want to do that too often, that's for sure. So that's what we're going to do today. And just to give you guys just a little bit of context here, although this sawmill is brand new, HM130 Max by Woodland Mills, I've been cutting with a similar model, a 2017 HM130 for a number of years. You would have seen that up in that shed in previous episodes. And so I have encountered the blade popping off before, but I think what I'm going to tell you today will help alleviate that problem from being encountered by you guys. Welcome back. Here we go. All right, before we talk about blades jumping off, let's talk about the specs on this thing for my setup. I've got the blade here set to a torque of 25 foot pounds. And so I use the torque wrench, goes right in the end there, the T handle and uh, get that tightened up. Now on this sawmill, I've only ever used 25 foot pounds as the torque. Uh, my other sawmill, my 2017 HM130, that's the exact same torque spec I used on that. That's why I started using it on this. On the back of my sawmill, and I think it says this in the manual, there is a bit of a range here. So that doesn't mean 25 is going to be the perfect setting for everybody. But at the very least, that's where I started and I haven't had any problems. So why quit on a good thing? Anyways, back to the blade. This is a standard blade that's sold by Woodland Mills. You'd have to call them and ask them who manufactures it. I have no idea, but that's where I bought it from. And so that's a standard blade there uh, for this HM130 Max. This right here is the belt that came on the sawmill. And so uh, nothing out of the ordinary here. Why would the blade potentially jump off? Well, the short of it is the alignment. All right, so these band wheels, this one and this one is not in alignment. Now there's a whole section in your manual that talks about how to align those. I'm going to talk briefly about some of that today. Before we get there, there's some other reasons why your blade might jump off. You see that? That right there will cause your blade to jump off. I purposely left this like this, uh, just so you can see that this can build up without you even noticing. How did I first uh, notice that there was some build up there? It's because the sawdust wasn't coming out all at the same time. It wasn't uh, coming out constantly. It was sort of dripping and drabbing and falling in clumps. So I opened this up. And this is what you see, all right? So sometimes bark off these red pines, it accumulates here, and then the dust hits it, and obviously the dust is nowhere to go. Uh, I have seen some people do some modifications here. I'm not gonna do that at this point because with my other sawmill, it worked fine for years. You just have the odd time that happens. So that can also cause the blade to pop off. Another reason the blade can pop off, aside from the uh, alignment of the band wheels, is coming down to the guides, all right? So you've got two guides here. A little bit dirty here, but you've got the guide over here and you've got the guides over here. Okay, now on both sides of the blade, the bottom and the top, you've got these guide blocks. That one, you can see it's a bit darker and the same thing on the bottom. Now on the back here, and it's probably easiest to see if you jump around the back, you guys can see that bearing. Okay, that bearing, as well as these guide blocks, the one on the top and the one on the bottom, they do not contact the blade under normal conditions. They're there as a guide, but they're not there to apply pressure to the blade as you're cutting. If we talk back about those blocks, how much space should there be between the block and the top of the blade, or the blade and the top of the bottom, bl bottom block? There should be a half of one millimeter. All right, so half of a millimeter, how are you gonna measure that? 
Well, unless you have some sort of feeler gauge, uh, you're probably gonna end up using like a thick piece of paper. You can slide that in. On top of the blade, slides in right there. Goes in between that top block and the blade. Likewise, goes in between the bottom part of the blade and the top part of the bottom block. That's gonna give it just a little bit of space so that when that blade's turning, it's not touching the guide blocks. That's very important to note. I think a lot of people are under the uh, impression that the blade should be rubbing on those guide blocks. No, the blades rest on these belts. These belts are on the band wheels. There's one there and there's another belt right here. The blade rests on those, on both sides. It does not rest on those guide blocks. The guide blocks are there to guide the blade in the event that something out of the ordinary happens. All right. Uh, likewise, that guide bearing. The guide bearing is behind the blade, <clears throat> as I just showed you. Right there, you guys can see me spinning it with my finger. The reason I'm able to spin it with my finger is because that guide bearing is not touching the blade under normal op op a little normal operations. That guide bearing is there in the event that the blade is forced back too much for whatever reason, and it comes into contact with it. That'll keep the blade spinning, right? So there's no actual contact between the guide blocks, the guide bearing, and the blade under normal conditions. If there is, that potentially is gonna kick that blade right off your band wheels. Let's just clean this off just a little bit. We'll get a little bit better of a look here. If you saw quite a bit like I do, you're gonna have dust in your sawmill more often than not. I use my blower quite a bit to clean things off. But there you go. Can you guys see down there? You might not be able to see. It's really, really close, but there should be a gap there between that blade and the top guide block and the bottom block and the and the blade as well. So that gap is there, as I said, at 0.5 millimeters or half of a millimeter. When we go to the back here, that guide bearing, that one right there, as well as the guide bearing on the other side right there, the gap there between the back of the blade and that guide bearing should be one millimeter. All right, so we're talking very, very small. What's a millimeter look like? Well, like I said, you're gonna probably need a feeler gauge or if you can find some uh, thick card stock, you know, something like that is probably gonna be your best bet. Uh, you know, close is probably good enough. Uh, in my opinion, as long as it's not touching, you're probably going to be good to go, assuming your gap isn't too big. If you get too big of a gap, well, what can happen is the one time that that blade deflects a little bit for whatever reason, and it needs that guide to help it stay where it should be, if it's too far away and the blade can't touch it, that could be another thing that kicks the blade off. All right, so let's just assume that everything looks good. Your blade is relatively new. There's no big damage to it. You've got the gaps between the top of the blade and the guide block at half a millimeter. Same thing between the bottom of the saw blade and the bottom uh, guide block at half a millimeter. The back of the saw blade and the guide bearing is one millimeter. Let's assume all of that is good. You've rotated the whole assembly around according to the owner's manual and nothing's rubbing, nothing's touching. Then the next thing you should look at is the belts. As I said before, there's a belt over here on the follower band wheel. There's also one over here on the drive band wheel. Looking at this one first, you'll notice mine's got some sawdust on it, but assuming that that sawdust is not like solid, in which it won't just fall off, uh, you should be okay. If that sawdust is coming off, no problem, then I'm gonna look at the condition of the belt. If that belt has no apparent damage, I'm moving over to this one. But what I'm looking for in terms of damage on that belt is things like chunks or cuts in the belt. If that belt is not going to allow that blade to sit flat on it, or that belt is not going to sit flat when it's riding in the groove of that band wheel, then you could potentially have the blade sort of on an angle as it's going around the band wheel. And I'm talking a very slight angle. If that happens, that has the potential to make that blade creep forward or backwards. And you'll notice that in a real hurry when you start up the sawmill and add power to it. It'll be like, pop, the blade will be off. All right, so look at the condition of that belt. If you're satisfied that that belt sits flat, there's no accumulation of sawdust, uh, there's no chunks, there's no cuts, it's sitting down in there, then look at this belt over here on the drive brand wheel. Look at the same things, if that's good, all right, on to the next step. What I'm gonna look at next is, I'm gonna make sure that the blade is not sitting right on the steel band wheel. If it's sitting right on it, that has the potential for that blade to slide. 
steel on steel on steel, right? The steel blade, the steel uh, band wheel, it'll cause sliding. If that happens, you're gonna have that blade pop off. You need to have that rubber, that rubber belt, just a little bit above the steel wheel so that the blade is actually sitting on the rubber. It's not sitting right on that band wheel. Same thing over here. You should have a bit of a gap here, right? So when that, when that belt sits down in that groove, it should cause the blade to sit up just a little bit above that band wheel so there's no steel on steel contact. If it doesn't, your belts are probably worn out. Get them changed and repeat the process. All right, I'm just gonna make a little admission here. I have before, because I didn't have a new belt to put on, I have before run a belt that was damaged in order to finish a cut, in order to finish a, a, a log that I was cutting. Now there was a small chunk out of the belt, so I thought, what the heck, we'll just keep running it. And truthfully, because the tracking and everything else was still good, the blade didn't pop off. But I was rolling the dice there a little bit. If I could have had an extra belt on hand and put it on, that would have saved me sort of that guesswork as to whether the blade was gonna pop off and I was gonna end up ruining not only a blade, but having to replace the belt as well. So I have done it. And not to state the obvious here, but see that right there? Woodland Mills put that fancy dancy sticker there to remind people that despite this not being okay on some other pieces of equipment, it is okay here. So I know some of you guys will be like, your belt is way too loose. It's not, that's where it's supposed to be. I'd also be checking the tension here. I can't remember the exact amount of play that there's supposed to be with this belt, but uh, you guys can find that in the owner's manual. If there is excess play here, or even if there's too little play, that has the potential for the blade to ride differently on this band wheel than it was designed for. So I'd be checking that. If your sawmill is relatively new, you may overlook this, but it doesn't hurt to check. Look at the overall condition of the bearings on both the follower side, as well as the drive band wheel side, just to make sure they look like they're as they should be. Assuming they are looking good, then you know you've gone through all the basic checks you need to. And a quick recap here, let's assume that the blade is in good condition. We look at the belt. The belt has no obvious rips, tears, or deformation or anything like that. The belt is sitting nicely in the groove of the band wheel on that side, as well as on this side. We also have checked the tension of the belt to make sure it's set properly according to the owner's manual. We've also made sure that the blade is riding above the steel band wheel. It's not contacting it. It should be riding on the belt there. Assuming that's good, then I'm looking to make sure there's no obvious debris that's gonna get in between the blade and the actual band wheel. So I'd brush all that out. Then I'd come down and look at my guides. Got my guide here and my guides over here. On this side, just as well as this side over here, I gotta make sure the gap between the top of the blade and that guide block is half a millimeter. The gap between the bottom of the blade and that guide block is half a millimeter. And then on the very back, my guide bearing and the back of the blade is one millimeter. That should be the same on that side as well as this side. Assuming that is all correct, working correctly, but it's still potentially going to pop off because uh, the blade is, is creeping forward or creeping back. Then what we have to do is come to the back of the follower band wheel side and start looking at adjustments here for tracking. So in the owner's manual, it talks about these two bolts here. These two bolts, as I said, will adjust the tracking of the uh, follower band wheel, this one over here. And so we will do this if that blade, when you rotate this assembly by hand, looks like it's creeping forward or backwards because you don't want to keep rotating it because if it's creeping forward and not staying in perfect alignment, it's going to jump off eventually. And it's going to jump off in a hurry, especially if you fire this engine up. So we want to fix that by fixing the tracking. In the manual, there's specific instructions how to get that blade to go back to the back or towards the front. Uh, make sure you follow that. Now, in some circumstances, no matter what adjustments you make over here to the follower band wheel, you will have to make adjustments to the drive band wheel. I can tell you from experience, not with this sawmill, but with my older HM130, I very rarely touch the uh, adjustments for the drive band wheel. But let's assume you had to. On the very back of your sawmill, you've got four bolts. Notice what it says right here. Refer to the manual before making drive side tracking adjustments. But if you have to do it, that's where you're going to do it. As I said, I have not had to uh, do that very often with my older sawmill. In fact, I have not had to do it with this newer sawmill. I have had to make some very slight 
tracking adjustments on the follower side though. And as I mentioned, that happens right here. In the manual, it's gonna talk about going very slowly with the follower band wheel tracking adjustments. I 100% agree. If you jump in there and you do a big adjustment, you're gonna see a big change. But what you might end up doing is you might end up just fighting that tracking, moving it way forward, way back, et cetera, et cetera. Instead, if you make very slight adjustments, you're gonna be able to stand over here. And when you rotate this assembly, you're gonna end up watching, and just look where my finger is, you're gonna end up watching that blade as it runs along the band wheel. And you're gonna be able to see very, very uh, minute movements. And that's what you're looking for. You're trying to get it back to where it's going to track perfectly on that band wheel as well as that band wheel. And one last thing I'm gonna bring up here deals with lubrication. Does the lubrication potentially cause a blade to jump off the band wheels? In my experience, it does. That depends what you're using and how much you're using. So for me, this has only worked for me and you guys may disagree with me and that's completely fine. I find using less lubrication is better. If I can get away with using no lubrication, I will. Let's assume I cut down a tree. It was living one hour, the next hour it's on the sawmill. That tree is full of water. And so I don't need to add any excess water to it in order to get a nice cut. The blades coming through the wood, it's nice and cool. Uh, the cut looks good. I'm not going to add anything additional uh, to that cut. But let's say I change the specie up. The uh, wood is nice and dry and I need a little bit of extra lubricant. I'm just going to put a little trickle on there, maybe just a few drops at a time. I like to stick with straight water. If it's really going to have some uh, sap in the wood, I'm going to uh, put in just a little bit of dish Dawn soap, but very, very little. I have experimented before with stuff like Pine Sol. And if you check out that video from a ways back on my old sawmill, um, I don't know if it contributed to my blade popping off, but that's exactly what happened. So I stay away from pine saw. I stay away from too much lubricant and I use next to none, if at all possible. So that's my two cents there, guys. Hopefully it was worth at least one cent. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure it goes down below in the comment section. And uh, do yourself a favor, get out, cut some wood. You might find yourself enjoying it just like I do. Guys, thanks very much for the support. Make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next time.